Okay, okay, before you come at me in the comments section, there actually were two more colors that came in the Play It Loud edition, the white and the blue. The white was Japan only and the blue was Europe only. I did look for both a white and a blue, but I couldn't find them anywhere, so I decided just to stick with the US colors. This one is probably my favorite because it comes with the case and it even comes with the original warranty card right here and matching serial numbers, both on the card and the Game Boy itself. But that's enough talking about them. Let's get started and we're gonna start with the original gray. This video is sponsored by BW100, more on them in a minute. So this one is pretty grimy. You got some nastiness up in the speaker grill there. Got a bunch of dirt down there. It's just kind of like everywhere. Serial number label is pretty much uh, gone. I feel like we should just take that all the way off maybe. Okay, let's check battery contacts. Oh yeah, we got some serious corrosion down here. Yeah, a little bit of corrosion up here as well. Let's put some batteries in though and see if this thing even turns on. I'm not hopeful given that the battery contacts are so corroded. We'll uh, try playing NHL Hockey 95. Let's see what happens. Oh, we actually get power? That's crazy. The start button, you have to press super hard to get it to work. I've never actually even played this game before, so I have no clue what I'm doing. But I think it's clear this one mainly needs the battery contacts cleaned, and then it just needs, or maybe replaced. Some of these you just can't clean, they're too corroded, and uh, I'm not sure about this one. This one could go either way. They might need to be replaced. But what we for sure need to do is give this one just a really good cleaning. And I think this one actually would make a really good separate cleaning video. So I hate to start this video off this way, but I think I'm gonna save this one for a specific cleaning video where we just take this and just totally clean the entire thing. So I'm gonna save this for a dedicated video just on this Game Boy. Let's move on to the next one. And next we have the black Game Boy, part of the Play It Loud edition. And apparently this was Josh's and it does actually come with the game. Donkey Kong Land, okay, that's cool. Let's check battery terminals. And of course, we've got some nasty corrosion down in there. A little bit up here, a little bit even all up here. So let's get some batteries in it and see if this one will turn on. See if it'll work at all. I specifically bought these Play It Loud editions that had the battery cover because it seems like anytime you try and get a replacement battery cover on these colored ones, they just never quite match. So I was able to get all of them with matching battery covers. No power. Sometimes when you move your fingers over the batteries, you can actually get it to kind of work for a minute. But this one just nothing. So. Well, let's get this one taken apart, see if we can figure out why it's got no power. I'll be using a Y0 tri-wing to remove all these screws. And then I think the back cover comes off. I've taken these apart a number of times a long time ago. Not anytime recently though. Okay, yeah, we gotta remove the screen connector here. So we'll just pull that right out. There we go. That connector looks to be in good condition. And this board, I don't see any sort of corrosion or anything up here. So that's definitely good news. Hopefully we don't have to worry about that. Let's check this board though. We've definitely got corrosion down here, so we need to address that. But other than that, this doesn't look too bad. So let's get these screws out so we can remove this board and have a look at these connectors. And then also the other side of this board, there could be some nasty corrosion on this one. Okay, now can we get this out? I don't remember. Definitely doesn't want it. This part wants to come out. This bottom part does not though. I think it's just, I think it's just these battery connectors holding it down, holding it in here. Oh, here we go. I think this is gonna get it. Wow, that was seriously stuck in there. Okay. This little board, okay, and there we go. So we've got that part out. Yeah, this is 
pretty nasty. It's got some serious corrosion in there. Let's have a look at this side. Yep, just got a lot of cleaning to do on that one. Okay, now let's have a look at this side of the board. Really, actually, probably not as bad as I thought other than this. This guy is very corroded. So if we run our pick over this, it just, this corrosion just flakes off here. So this, actually, this might actually be cleanable because I don't actually see, the plating actually looks pretty good on this. So a lot of times, especially when the plating is bad, then you have to just replace these. And I might end up doing that on this one, but it really uh, doesn't look as bad as I would think it would. The other thing is this spring also has kind of a coating of corrosion. So that's one of the reasons why a lot of times it's just easier to replace these because the corrosion that kind of coats these springs can be really hard to get all the way off. And then there's corrosion that builds up underneath here, these little clips right here on each side. And those can be really hard to get all that corrosion off. And if you don't, then that just creates kind of a bad connection right there. So we may just need to replace this anyway. And after looking at this a bit more, I think the best thing we can do is replace it or at least at a minimum, I'm going to remove it and then maybe we can do some cleaning on it and put it in a different Game Boy. But I think for this one, I'm just going to replace it with this brand new battery connector. In order to do that, you saw me add some gel onto the connection. That's called flux. Then I'm just going to bring my large soldering iron in and melt the solder. And that should allow this one to fall right out. And then we'll clean up the board and install the new one in its place. Now let's have a look at the board on the other side. We should be able to get a better view and it actually doesn't look too bad. I'm just gonna scrape off any excess corrosion over here. And then we'll just clean it with some isopropyl alcohol. And we'll install the new one. Okay, and we have that one replaced. This one looks really good. Don't see any corrosion on that. So now I think we're ready to get this board installed back into the Game Boy. But first, we need to deal with this one. In order to get that out, we need to push on this little tab back here, just like this. Oh, there we go. And then it just falls out just like that. Clearly this is really dirty back here. Luckily, it's easy to scrape off, it just comes right off, so shouldn't be too big of an issue, hopefully. And then while we're here, we do need to address all of this nastiness as well. That scrapes off real easy. I need to not press too hard or else I'll make permanent scratches in this plastic, but also I need to get all this stuff off, so I am using a metal dental pick, but it um, I'm not pressing super hard, so it gets all the corrosion off without making permanent marks in the plastic. Getting there. And with that all cleaned out, we can install this battery terminal. And now we can start putting the rest of this together and hopefully this will start up when we're done. So in with the board and now the top piece needs to slide on here with this ribbon cable. Okay, good. Now batteries, and then we can see if we've fixed our first Game Boy. Okay, here we go. Is it gonna turn on? Oh, we got the light right here. Oh, nothing on the screen though. And Okay, so we've got a dead screen, but it does turn on, so we're making progress. I need to get this thing pulled back apart and see if we can figure out this screen issue. Actually, you know what? We just need to, yeah, I just need to change the contrast. Ah, rookie mistake. Okay, that's good news though. Let's put the game back in. 
and see if it plays. There's our Nintendo logo. Oh, there we go. I've never actually played this game before. Okay, all the buttons seem to work. Got him. How do I get up on the tree? 20 minutes later. Ah, oh, the snake killed me. Okay, so the black Game Boy is all fixed up. Let's move on to the green Game Boy and see if we can fix this one. So for the green Game Boy, if we look at it to the side, eh, it's kind of hard to tell. It looks to me like this polarizer is not great. It's kind of got like a burn spot in the middle. So we're going to look at that. Also... Let's have a look. Oh yeah, we got corroded battery contacts here. It looks like mainly just that one though. The rest of them I think can be clean. So let's get this apart, replace this one, and then see if it'll turn on. And that's the battery terminal we need to remove. So I'm gonna press it in on the tab while I push down. And that should get it to pop out. There we go. And this contact has some of the plating wearing off, so the corrosion has eaten through the plating. Anytime that happens, I usually just replace it. There is a process you can do where you use a chemical to eat all the rust and then you can replate these, but these are also easily available, so I'm just gonna replace it. Do you want to give this a bit of a cleaning and make sure any corrosion is out of here? Sometimes it's easier for corrosion to, to start on metal if there was corrosion there before. So it just helps get anything out that might be in there. Now we'll install the new terminal and then try and start this thing up and see if it'll work. Here we go. Oh, still no power. Oh, we had it. Okay, there we go. All right, so that's a good enough test. We know that it is mostly working. The screen actually looks pretty good. I was thinking it was a polarizer issue, but I don't really see any problems with it turned on. So I'm gonna take this thing apart and let's get this thing cleaned up. There's also a lot of dust under here, so I wanna clean that as well. We've also got some corrosion on this contact between the boards. So this little guy contacts right here and there's definitely corrosion there too. So I'm just gonna clean that off real quick. And then we'll clean off this contact point right here. Now with those two cleaned off, we can continue on removing this board so we can get down to the screen. Also, this was the good old days of electronics. Look at all these markings right here. We got markings for all of this stuff. Even this one even says it's a 100 ohm resistor on R2. We got an LED over here. It shows what voltage we should have on this diode, 3.6 volts on this diode. This is how I wish all electronics were. This way you know exactly what each of these components should be reading. Unfortunately, these days, manufacturers don't want you to fix your stuff, so you'll go out and buy new stuff. But that's what we fight against here at Tronix Fix, so let's see if we can get this screen fixed. <laughs> the uh, screen protector just fell off. That's fine, we can fix that later. So what I'm gonna do right now is remove this old polarizer and then we will install this new polarizer. Now to do this, I'm gonna be using an X-Acto knife, doing my best to not point it towards me. And just get under the layer for the polarizer and try to not break the glass screen. Oh, there we go, I think we got it, maybe? Yeah, there we go. So now, can we pull the rest of it up without breaking anything? That's the question. Okay, and here we go. 
Oh, man. That scared me. Just the screen snapping all the way down. Okay, that's coming up really fairly easily so far, which probably means I'm about to break something. Come on. This smells pretty funky, honestly. Probably that old adhesive. The nice thing is it looks like the adhesive is coming up pretty well on the old polarizer and not too much is sticking to the screen as far as I can tell. Well, that's great. That'll be much easier to clean. And there we go. Now we need to clean this screen. I'm just going to be using a Q-tip with some isopropyl alcohol. That will help remove any of the adhesive that's stuck onto the screen, like right here. There's really not that much adhesive on this screen. This makes this job way easier. And that looks pretty good. So here is the new polarizer. I need to put it on like that. We've got, I think, a layer of prote protective plastic on the back. Yep. And probably one on the front. Maybe. Yep. Okay. And then that's going to go right on there. Just like that. Okay, good. And just looking at it, I actually probably should put the polarizer on here first. Because when I put this into here, that's going to cause it to probably move around a little bit. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Got a little bit of cleaning up to do on some of this adhesive right here. So I'm going to get that off and then we'll put the polarizer on here and then we'll put the screen in. Okay. As far as I know, it doesn't matter which way the polar polarizer goes as long as it's oriented correctly. So, as far as front and back, I don't think it matters which way it goes. There we go. That looks pretty good. I'm going to move it over this way just a little bit. And push down to get it to adhere a little bit. So next, I'm actually going to do a little bit of cleaning on this, because this is disgusting. I'm going to come in with my pick, get all the chunky pieces off. Then we'll come in with Q-tip and some IPA. That'll do the cleaning part. And now with all that clean, we can get those buttons installed and then get the screen on. Okay, now with all the screws in, let's see how it looks. Ooh, that is beautiful. Not even any dust on the screen. That looks really good. Although we do have to attend to all this old adhesive. We have to remove at least some of that to put the new screen protector on. So what I'm going to do is bring in some isopropyl alcohol and soak all of this adhesive. Once it gets gets soaked for a while, then it'll be easier to rub off with the Q-tip. I don't know why I'm doing this now. I should have just done it when the screen was out. But, you know, sometimes we like to do things the hard way around here. Then we'll get our new screen protector. There we go. And with all of our backing off, we can put it right here. Boom. And there we go. Now let's get this installed onto the rest of the handheld. And then we'll turn it on and see if it's going to work and what this new screen looks like. Okay, game in. Let's turn it on and see what happens. Good so far. Oh, that is beautiful. 
Look at that screen. That is so nice. So I think we're done with the green. Now it's time to move on to the yellow one. And let's put some batteries in this yellow Game Boy. I already see a little bit of corrosion going on down there. So that may be the main problem with this one. Let's find out. And does it power on? Oh, we do get some power. Okay, let's try with the game. Oh! Okay, so clearly the Game Boy itself works fine. We do have some corrosion on this battery terminal, so let's get that fixed up. And then we'll test it again just to make sure that it's all going to be working, but... So far, this one actually looks to be in great condition and seems to work just fine, other than this corrosion down here. Normally, I use BW100 Electronic Contact Cleaner to clean things like controller analog sticks. It works really great for things like Nintendo Switch Joy-Cons. You can spray this down inside the Joy-Con and it will, at least a lot of times, eliminate stick drift. Now, if your analog stick is completely worn out, then no amount of cleaning is going to fix that. But if it's just dirty or there's gunk inside there, then BW100 often works really well to clean that out of Joy-Cons, PS5 controllers, PS4 controllers, Xbox controllers, I use that for all of those controllers and it really helps with stick drift. But in this case, since we got some battery contacts that are faulty on this Game Boy, let's take a look and see how BW100 does at cleaning those battery contacts. So right down here is the problem. We've got some corrosion on this battery contact right here. I'm gonna use some BW100 and spray in there. Do that kind of like a good soaking. And then take my toothbrush and just uh, brush it around and just clean as much of that off as I can. Some canned air. And as you can see, that definitely got a lot of it off. The rest of it I'm gonna take with my pick and just kinda scrape it off as well as I can. But overall, that actually worked pretty decently. One of the things I love about BW100 is I can use it on these plastics and it doesn't do any damage at all to the plastics. It also evaporates very quickly and it doesn't leave any sort of residue and it doesn't make anything like slippery or anything like that when I'm working on these electronics. In addition, BW100 is non-flammable, so I never have to worry about it catching fire or anything if it gets on the wrong thing. This evaporates so quickly that I can spray it on pretty much any electronics and it won't do any damage to the circuit boards. BW100 is also non-conductive. Because of that, you don't actually have to turn off your electronics before you use BW100. I still usually do just to avoid any chance of any problems happening, but if for some reason you can't, it is still safe to use BW100 on them because it is non-conductive. I keep BW100 for my use here in the shop as well as a can at home. If you wanna try it out for yourself, I'll leave a link in the description that'll take you right there. Now, even though BW100 did a pretty good job of cleaning the corrosion off of this battery contact, one thing I do notice is this contact right here is kind of rusty. And the problem with that is there's, it's not a matter of cleaning this, the plating has completely been worn off. And so it's just gonna be better to replace this battery contact even though it is much cleaner. So I'm gonna replace it with a, another contact that has some good plating on it. And then this Game Boy should be ready to go, but we'll test it again afterwards just to make sure. I'm just gonna use my pick just to get down into little crevices and make sure all of this corrosion is taken off and we'll just blow it out of there make sure not to blow it into your eyes if you do that it does sting you know from what i've heard not that i've ever experienced that okay let me just push the new connector down here or contact just like that now it's ready to go back together and with that all fixed up Let's try and remove this scratch on the on the screen right here. Actually, I'm getting it pretty well just with my nail. There we go, that's better. Now, let's see if it's gonna work. You think it's gonna work? I bet it's gonna work great. Power's on, first try, no problem. Can shake around, doesn't disconnect. Okay, and Yellow Game Boy is all fixed up and working. Let's move on to 
the clear Game Boy, and then we'll get to the fancy red one in the box. And what is gonna be wrong with this one? Battery terminals, uh, this one's a little dirty here, but these look like the best I've seen out of this lot so far. Makes me wonder what else we're gonna find here. Let's first see if we have power, and we do. And we also have a big fat line on the screen. really good there so let's deal with that first and then we'll test the rest of it and with it separated we have to remove all of these Phillips screws to remove this board and that'll get us to the screen actually looking at it right here it makes me wonder if somebody's maybe tried to fix this before it's got like some leftover flux here it looks like somebody's tried to re-solder these connections which actually look pretty good so that's the good news but I think what we need to do is work up here. I'm gonna remove this little strip right here and then that will get us to this ribbon cable. I'm gonna use my soldering iron to heat this up and hopefully that will re-solder the connections and make this work just like new again. It doesn't always work, but sometimes it does. So let's see if we get lucky on this one. We will set this aside and be sure to put it back on Having that here puts extra pressure right on this, and that will help to keep pressure on those connections. Okay, next one I'm gonna do is reattach this ribbon cable, and then I'm actually gonna turn it on and solder it while it's turned on, and then I can see if the soldering I'm doing is helping restore the screen. Now with that there, I'm gonna run my nice hot soldering iron right across this ribbon cable. So we're gonna go right here. Getting closer. Come on. Now sometimes as you're doing this, it will look like it's not really working, but then once it cools down, it will work. So hopefully that'll happen today. So far, we're definitely not getting, we're not having much success with this other, this, uh, this side of the line over here. Let's try and turn it off and turn it back on. Yeah, that is not really doing us much good. I feel like it I feel like we've gotten maybe one line back, but it's not doing real good on any of the others. So even after working on this for about 20 minutes, we still have about three lines that we cannot restore. And one of them is kind of only temporary anyway. Oh actually oh, there we go. If we press in just the right place, that line just goes away again. But the three in the middle, I can't get to show up no matter what I do or how much heat I hold on this thing. So unfortunately, I think this screen we're just going to have to replace. I don't think this screen is going to be good anymore or going to be fixable. A lot of times these little, these little traces on these screens, you can just heat up and that will restore the connection. But unfortunately, if the connection is just too bad, there's just not really anything you can do. So in this case, I'm gonna have to replace the screen. So this is the old faulty screen. This is, I think, the replacement screen. I have it plugged in so we can make sure it works. Let's check it out. Okay, good news so far. Looks like all the lines are working there. I don't see any problems at all. So let's put this working screen onto our original board. Yes, I do realize that we could just swap boards, but I wanna actually do the screen replacement, so that's what I'm gonna do here. Whew! That is a lot more difficult than I thought it would be, but so far I think we're doing okay. Now I need to see if we can swap this screen over to the good board 
or I guess the good screen over to the other good board. Each of these little tiny pins right here, yet I have to solder back on over here. Some of them are a little bent. I don't think I broke any, so I'm hopeful, but this is a lot more difficult than I thought it would be. Okay, here we go. Okay, I think we have it soldered correctly, but is it gonna work? Let's get it plugged in to the main board and see what happens. Okay, here we go. Oh, good news. Oh, there we go. Yes, this is actually a lot more difficult soldering than I expected it to be, so it's so good to see that screen working. Now we can get this the rest of the way back together and test a game in it and see if everything else is working. And judging on the looks of the inside of this, we also might need to make another cleaning video about this one, cleaning slash restoration. But will it play a game? Let's find out. It is playing a game just fine. Okay, and this clear Nintendo Game Boy is all fixed up. Now it's time to take a look at the red one. All right, this one is such a cool one just because it comes in this full case. So this was $49.96 at Walmart back in the day. And this one is in such nice condition with the exception of these really nasty corroded battery terminals. But I'm gonna put batteries in it and let's see if this thing even turns on. Okay, let's see. Oh, we actually get power. And it even turns on. I don't know how that's even possible. These things are so corroded. All right, so even though it does turn on like this, I can't keep this thing like this. These things, these battery terminals are just so bad. So what I'm gonna do is actually just replace all of them because we can't have an original Game Boy that is in this nice a condition with battery terminals that look like this. So let's get it all apart and replace all these terminals. Okay, and look at this. It's even got this little cover right here still. That's crazy. This one is so nice. Okay. Now we need to remove all this so we can get down to these terminals here. Get those things replaced. This one's gonna be so nice when we're done. And with those ones soldered onto the board, you can push this tab in to get this one out. There's one. And then same thing here. Gotta push these tabs down. That will enable me to push these battery terminals out as well. There we go. Now we can clean up the battery enclosure. And then we can install the new terminals. And then this one's gonna be looking real nice. I'm going to be very careful here to hopefully not scratch up this plastic any more than is absolutely necessary. Just want to keep this thing looking as pristine as possible since it's in such good condition. It's really rare to find a Game Boy in this condition these days. They're usually in pretty rough shape when you find them. Now, some of this stuff is on here pretty uh, pretty good, so I am going to use my pick to get some of it off. 
but I'm just going to be pressing very gently just enough to get it off so I don't make any extra scratches in the plastic. Okay, I'm going to come in with some BW100, spray it in here very liber liberally, and then do some brushing with my toothbrush. That is looking really good. All right, and with that all nice and clean, let's get these new terminals installed. This is going to look so much better with these new ones in here. There's one, two, and three. Now this guy will go in right here. And now the top half can go on. So excited to start this thing up. It's going to look so good. And we got the battery door all nicely clean. Just look at the condition of this. The label's nice. Even the sticker with the serial number looks so good. Okay, let's see what happens. Here we go. Come on. All right, we got battery power. Sounds good. Speaker sounds good. And here we go. And it plays a game just fine. So we're able to fix every color of original Game Boy. If you want to see us do a restoration and cleaning of this original Game Boy, I'll put a link for that video up on your screen now. I think you're going to like it. Thanks so much for watching today. Thank you to BW100 for sponsoring this video, and I hope you have a good one.